start with the NBA Finals Game 2 between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. The Warriors tied up the series at one game apiece. Obviously, they dropped Game 1, so this Game 2 was absolutely a must-win game, 107-88. to And it's interesting because in the Finals, obviously, you can dissect the differences of every single game, and every single game feels like it takes on an identity of its own. But the interesting thing is in a lot of ways, games one and two are actually quite similar to one another. Obviously in game one, the Warriors had that huge third quarter led by 12 going into the fourth. But throughout the entirety of the first half, the the feeling, the overwhelming feeling was Boston is in a pretty good position here. They obviously led by four at the half. In game one, they had withstood Steph Curry's 21.6 three-pointer first quarter onslaught. And yet, they were doing this despite the fact that Jason Tatum was shooting it poorly. And not only did they hang around and they competed, they stayed within striking distance. And going into the first into the fourth quarter, they obviously made their first seven shots. They hit nine of 12 three-pointers. Actually, I think they, they hit 10, in, 10 shots in a row in the fourth quarter. And they pulled off a stunner. And they set some historical marks for their shooting prowess in that fourth quarter to take the, the series opener. But the interesting thing was, last night in Game 2, in a lot of ways, the first half transpired very similarly similarly to the first half of game one. Because the overarching feeling that I got was yes, it's impressive that Golden State is somehow leading this game by two going into halftime. But I really liked Boston's position. I was extremely encouraged by the way that they were playing. Obviously the first quarter, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown each had 13 points. They were shooting it extremely well, perhaps had some ticky tack fouls go against them that forcibly sidelined them and forced them to be seated a little bit. But you had Tatum going off. He had 21 points in the first half. You had Jalen Brown playing extremely well in the first half, at least in that first quarter. And so the position that Boston was in, really what derailed them was the turnovers. They committed nine turnovers in the first half, and that was the primary reason that Golden State was hanging around because then once again, that third quarter came and Golden State was wreaking havoc defensively. They were forcing all kinds of turnovers. It was transferring into points. And the biggest difference was for one thing, Jordan Poole got it going, dropped 17 points hit back to back threes to close out the quarter punctuated by that three point bomb from about 39 feet away from the basket, one step across the half court line, just punctuated a a third quarter that the Warriors ultimately led by 23 going into the fourth. And that lead, it seemed insurmountable. And yet they completely slammed the door shut by starting off the fourth on a 7-0 run. And that was the big difference. Game one, they couldn't sustain some of their offense from that third quarter into the fourth game two, that wasn't a problem. And this is what highlights the biggest, the biggest difference, which was a complete opposite from game two last night to game one on Thursday. And actually game one, what was shocking wasn't simply the fact that Boston shot it at historically high rates in the fourth quarter, but it was the fact that golden state's offense looked so anemic and petrified in that fourth quarter. That's what that's what was shocking because it was an atrociously bad collapse, an unexpected collapse by the Warriors in that fourth quarter. And Steph Curry noted something in his postgame remarks that I think ring really true here. He had mentioned when Lisa Salter, I think the difference was between the second half and in particular the third and fourth quarters of game one versus last night in game two, Steph Curry had mentioned and noted how game, both games one and two, the third quarters were very similar. 
They got it going offensively. But the biggest difference was that the Warriors defensively were ratcheting up their, their defensive pressure. They were creating a lot more turnovers. They were closing the gaps, getting into the airspace of the Celtics players a little bit more, especially to begin the fourth quarter. And this is why the Golden State Warriors have, have been always, I think, a misunderstood team for several years and why people have kind of misunderstood how they've managed to win time and time again. It hasn't just been because of their dynastic and explosive offense. That's always been there. They've always been a naturally potent offensive team. But what makes them even more lethal is the fact that they get after you defensively. It's really their defense in creating turnovers that leads into these electric offensive plays. The difference between Golden State and Boston, Boston always has an elite defense. They play at an elite level every single game. And that was the case for much of the game yesterday. They still held Golden State to 107 points. But the difference with Boston is their defense doesn't ignite their offense. For the Warriors, that's often what happens. They can get it going offensively, but it's their defense that's going to spark these huge, huge runs. For Boston, they'll play good defense whether they're making shots or missing shots. And I think that that was the biggest difference was the defensive intensity. Obviously, Draymond Green was getting into it with Jalen Brown, was getting into it with Marcus Smart, was getting into it with Al Horford. He was getting into it with every single Boston Celtics player. I don't want to say trying to inti- trying to intimidate them because I don't think the Celtics are intimidated by Draymond Green, but he wanted them to feel his presence. And Draymond Green, for better or for worse, really toes the line, was again dangerously close to being ejected in that game yesterday. And I understand that that's part of his internal DNA, his internal makeup. And that's the type of player that he is. He always plays with with an edge. That's what's made him such a successful NBA player. But I do think he's got to be a little bit more aware and cognizant of the situation that he's in because I think it could have been he could have he could have jeopardized the Warriors in that second game if he was tossed with an ejection. If he had received a double technical with Brown for that little skirmish on the floor, which easily could have been a double technical, could have, it definitely would have been a double technical in a regular season game. And it was close to being assessed a double technical last night. And you just can't cost your team again in the finals. I mean, it's like he didn't learn anything from several years ago against LeBron and the Cavs in game four of that 2016 NBA Finals. Got ejected or got suspended for game five. I mean, you just can't put yourself in that situation. But again, that's that's the fine line that he straddles. And he says that he's earned the right to be officiated differently, perhaps. But I will say that there are a couple things that I think have been further established. Steph Curry, of course, is the best player, unequivocally the best player on the Warriors. I think that he has quashed any concerns. We'll obviously see how he plays on the road in Boston. But what he's been doing offensively, it's pretty remarkable given the fact that as much as we've lauded the Warriors' offense and their ball movement, he really seems like the only guy that can go create his own shot in any given moment. Jordan Poole, I think is, and listen, he's still growing. He's still maturing as a player and he's a special player, but I think right now he sometimes needs a guy like Steph or someone else to start to get going to then feed off of it. If they're down 10, 15 points, I'm not sure if Jordan Poole is going to spark a run on his own because Clay Thompson hasn't been given Steph much of any help, 15 points in game one, But single digits last night, four for 19, one for eight from the three-point line. They're going to need Klay Thompson to shoot it much better on the road at TD Bank Garden. I think for the Warriors to have a chance of taking 
one of those two road games. I really do think that that's what's going to be required because the bottom line is Boston is still in the driver's seat. They did what they were supposed to do. They split in the first two games. And I think that despite recent history suggesting otherwise, I do think Boston will, will play better at home. This is the first series where, or I shouldn't say the first series, it's the second series really where they are the – lower seeded team returning home to that raucous crowd. And I know that they've struggled at home for much of the postseason. They've lost four games this postseason already at home. But I do think that the Warriors, listen, they still have to go on the road and steal one back and take one back. And, and there, that's not, there's no guarantees there. The games that Miami won on the road, Jimmy Butler, Dropped 47, 9, and 8, played perhaps his greatest playoff career game. And Bam Adebayo dropped over 30 one game. So it required some, some magical performances on the road. And that's what the Warriors are going to have to do. But I just think, though, overall, we're, we're in for a stellar series. Obviously tied 1-1. I think that both teams can make a claim and make a case for being really optimistic going back to Boston. The Warriors can say to themselves, well, I think we should be up to nothing, which they have a valid argument for that. The Celtics are saying, or could be saying, we're in a great position tied 1-1, and we really haven't seen the best performances out of all of our guys altogether. So even though Horford and Smart and Derek White couldn't, conjure up the same performance offensively in game one as they could in game two. I think that will change in Boston. Now, who knows what you're going to get necessarily from Tatum and Brown, but I think the role guys will obviously play a lot better in Boston. And I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. Wednesday night for game three is going to be an absolutely critical game of this series. So cannot wait uh, for that to see what types of adjustments both teams make.